Hey there, welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana and I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer. Today's video is going to be all about Adobe Fresco. This app has come a long way since its debut back in 2019. So if you've been itching to try it out for your digital art, but didn't know where to start, this is the video for you. This video's subscriber shout out goes out to Suraj E. He's a lettering artist, give him a follow on Instagram. For your chance to be the subscriber shout out for the next video, give me a follow on Instagram at AGF Design Studio. All right, let's jump right into the video. When you open the app, this is the screen that you'll see. This is your home screen. Here you'll see that there are four tabs. You have one for home, one that says your work, learn, and discover. If you've finished watching this video and you ever need a refresher, you can always go back to the Learn tab. So right now I'm on my home screen here and I'm going to start by tapping Custom Size. Here you'll see a bunch of different options. You have Saved, Digital, Print, as well as Recent. Any of your recent file configurations can be found there. Change your unit measurements, width and height, and also switch your orientation. If you're thinking of printing your work, I would suggest setting your PPI to 300. If you check off Save This Size, your screen configurations will go into the Save section for you to use in the future. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to open a previous piece of mine. If you're at all familiar with Adobe applications, you'll probably notice that the interface looks and feels familiar. Nevertheless, I'm still going to begin with a basic tools overview. In the top left-hand corner here, you'll see three brushes. In Adobe Fresco, there are three different brush types. The first one is pixel brushes, which produces the elements of your artwork using small dots or pixels. As you can see, there's a very large selection for you to choose from. All brushes have a little star next to them so that you can favorite them and reference them for later. As a lettering artist, I love the lettering category, so I use this category a lot in particular. The next is live brushes. Here you'll see that you have the choice between watercolor and oil. As you may know, it can be really hard to replicate the feeling of actual traditional art materials. Well, with live brushes, you can make it look like you're using real wet paint and get realistic color mixes and effects. The last one is vector brushes. And this is awesome because that means that you have access to making infinitely scalable graphics with the stroke of a brush. A lot of other apps like Procreate don't have vector brushes. And this is one way that Adobe Fresco really stands out. So if you ever wanna take your piece into Adobe Illustrator, for example, and refine your work, you can. Here you have your brush tool settings. This indicator here changes your brush size. If you slide it up, it'll get thicker. And if you slide it down, it'll get finer. Here you'll see your smoothing tool. This is a great tool, especially for lettering artists like me, because when I do script styles, it really allows me to do a nice controlled line. It's similar to Streamline and Procreate. It can feel a bit stiff, however, if the setting is up too high, so just keep that in mind and adjust accordingly. Tapping the photo icon allows you to add photos to your document, to use images for reference, or to include in your piece. Pull photos from your own photo library, or take a new photo with the device itself. As we travel, we can see the eraser tool. Pretty self-explanatory. You also have the smudge tool under that, and you'll see that you have the option to smudge with a variety of different brush options as well. This is your transformation tool. Use it to move around the elements of your drawing on the screen. The selection tool is one of my favorites because you can use it to isolate parts of your image and move it around individually. Once you're done with it, you can just tap Deselect. 
Here you have your fill tool, pretty standard, and you can use it to change your background, for example, or parts of your image. The text tool is here, and it's also pretty standard. Use this tool to add text to your piece, as the tool settings will come up to the side and allow you to make adjustments to your font, the size, and more. Another tool that you'll see here is called the Touch Shortcut. It's just represented by this little circle here, and it's got a lot of different functions, but I'll just go over the very basic ones with you right now. So I'm just going to select a brush, create a new layer, and draw this line. Then I'm going to hold down the touch shortcut, and this will transform my current brush into an eraser. Pretty cool, right? I'll be able to do that without having to switch to the eraser tool individually. And as soon as I release, it'll turn back into a brush again. If you don't already have the touch shortcut activated, you can just go to settings and toggle it on. But like I mentioned, this little button does a lot of different things. So if at any point you want an overview, just go to settings, app settings, go to help, and then under touch shortcut, all the things that it can do will be listed. Okay, now to have fun with gestures. Two finger tap to undo. Three finger tap to redo. You also have access to the undo and redo arrows at the top right hand corner if you prefer. Two fingers pinching in to zoom out. Two fingers spreading apart to zoom in. Quick pinch with two fingers to set your canvas to the size of your screen. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see an icon here that is your layers panel. This shows you all the layers that make up your drawing. You can take one finger, tap and drag any layer to reorder your layers with ease. And remember that touch shortcut? An easy way to group your layers is by holding down the touch shortcut, tapping all the layers you wanna group, and then tapping the folder icon to group them together. This little plus sign icon is for adding a new layer. This allows you to create clipping masks as well. A clipping mask is a way that you can make edits and changes to the layer below non-destructively. So as you can see, this clipping mask layer is yellow, but the layer below it is still that teal color. So there are all sorts of ways for you to experiment with clipping masks and color in Adobe Fresco that are super fun and simple. This icon that looks like a bunch of sliders represents your layer properties. Here you can change your opacity and your blend modes. You'll probably recognize these effects from other apps like Photoshop or Procreate, and these are great for experimenting with effects in your drawing. With your layers, you also have the option of cutting, copying, pasting, and more. So the three dot icon at the bottom here will open your layer actions panel. You can also simply tap your layer once and open the same exact menu. recent update to Adobe Fresco is that they've added guides. So here this icon that looks like a little grid opens your guides panel. Simply toggle it on and you have the option to change the size and opacity to your liking. And then here you'll see an option that says alignment guides. When you have that checked, you'll see that with these two blue lines, you can tell your work is centered to your canvas. Another recent update that was super great to see come from the app. Next, we're going to talk color. This button will bring up your color wheel and you can just move your point around to get your light and darks and move it around the circle to choose your hue. Adobe Fresco comes preloaded with these Fresco color palettes and you'll also see themes. I also have a whole video talking about three ways to add color in Adobe Fresco that I'll link in the description box below. So let's just say I've added a whole bunch of colors to my canvas. If I ever want to identify the specific colors on my canvas, with one finger, I can press and hold onto the screen and move it around to any point on my canvas. As I go, the color will change in my color button. 
your drawing aids are tools that help you make things like straight lines and trace certain shapes. Here you'll find the ruler, as well as ways to make a perfect circle, square, rectangle, or polygon. All right guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like it, share, subscribe, and leave me a comment below with any comments or questions that you may have. For your chance to be the subscriber shout out for the next video, give me a follow on Instagram at AGF Design Studio. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.